Good morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Uh, gracious good morning as we gather together. We welcome you here, member, friend. Um, we are glad that you're worshiping with us on this uh, beautiful, cloudy, cool day here in Sarasota. So a nice day to, to come to worship, a nice day to just enjoy the day, the gift that God has given us. Uh, as we've been doing during COVID, uh, instead of passing the peace, what we've been doing is if you feel comfortable, we've invited you to lower your mask just for one moment. Turn around and wave to your neighbors because I see some new faces that I hadn't seen for a long time, Gail and Bob and the Holdsworths. Some other people, we're glad to have you start trickling back in, and that's wonderful to have you here. Uh, quite a few announcements. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but need to point out a couple things. Starting next, uh, next Sunday begins our Holy Week, believe it or not. Let me tell you the schedule. Next Sunday, we'll have our Worship Palm Sunday in here. On Wednesday, you can uh, do the prayer service that we have online. Thursday, for Monday Thursday service, we will have a service here. It will also be live streamed. It'll be at 7 o'clock. Uh, Friday, we are going to have the Sounds of the Soul that will have a good Friday feel to it. Uh, Carl Ann Evans will be here and will be outside um, doing the Sounds of the Soul. Saturday, we're going to hold an Easter egg hunt for the kids. It's going to be over here on the south parking lot. Uh, it'll be outside and once again, we'll try to do all the protocols to keep people uh, safe. Speaking of the Easter egg hunt, Kylie's collecting candy, Easter egg candy. Uh, it can't be uh, uh, anything that has nuts or chocolate and it needs to be individually wrapped. If you would like to bring some candy in, she would love to, or if you'd like to contribute to that, I know that she would be grateful for that. Um, after quite a bit of deliberation, a little bit of onks going on for us, and probably um, some disappointment, we decided that it probably is going to be best that we do not do sunrise service on the beach this, this year. Um, we know in the past that we've had over, I mean, three to 4,000 people, and we just, at this point, just didn't think it was a um, uh, uh, responsible thing for us to do. Um, and there was, it was been hard for us because I know how much people enjoy it and we're gonna, we're disappointed about that. So to accommodate those who do like to get up early and to do sunrise, we're gonna do a sunrise service here at the church. Um, just, you know, it'll be a, a smaller group. We're gonna do it over there near the community center at 6.45 a.m. So if you'd like to do sunrise, greet the uh, morning. It's going to be at 645 over at the community center. We'll also have our regular worship service here at 945, which will be, you can come here or you can see it live stream, either one on that. Speaking of uh, Easter, I hope you got your letter talking about the Easter lilies. I also put up some envelopes out here if you'd like to purchase or honor or memory of someone, of uh, the lilies. And um, we hope that you will do that. Uh, several um, announcements dealing with children and youth. One is PSY meets tonight. Does it meet tonight, Kylie? Yes, yes PSY meets tonight. Joy Company meets on Wednesday. Uh, and just let you know that Cedar Kirk, our camp, is going to have camp this year. It's going to be a limited number because they have protocols they have to follow. So if you know children or grandchildren or friends um, who kids need to get out in the woods, um, then you need to sign up for Cedar Kirk early so that I hope that if you want to do that, I have it on the e -gramp. You go down, all you have to do is click where it says Cedar Kirk, click, and it takes you right to registration. And finally, I uh, want to welcome Michelle Nicolette here, who's playing the oboe, oboe and also to... Um, Wayne tells me that we need to offer her congratulations, that she is a first-time grandmother. So congratulations to you. We're glad that you're here. That's very exciting. You have a lot of people here who can talk about what it is to be a grandmother. So we're, we're decided, delighted that you're here today. And also we're delighted to have, you will, I'm going to, this is what, I'm, she's going to kill me. We're going to have a mystery voice singing today. So I'm not going to tell you who it is, but next week I will. So you, you get to guess who is going to be singing with Rick today. So listen real carefully um, and put your guesses in, and we'll let you know who it is. So um, once again, take in a big breath. And let us breathe in God's goodness as we begin our worship listening to wonderful music.
Please join me in our call to worship. We worship in the season of Lent, a time to examine our hearts and our lives. In journey with Christ through the suffering of the world. Let us seek God with our whole hearts and treasure God's word in our spirits. God has marked us as beloved dust and called us together to worship. Let us worship God as we gather with prayer. Let us pray together. Hospitable God, you invite us to a banquet where the last may be first and the humble and the mighty trade places. Let us share your abundance with no fear of scarcity. Let us greet strangers as angels you have sent. Send your spirit now so that we may find a place at your table and welcome others with radical hospitality. In the name of Jesus, guest at our tables, we pray. Amen. You'll help me up if I need to, don't you? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. They come to your house to play. Yes. You have? Was it a friend? Yes. What did you do? Yes. You were in your room. Were you playing? Yes. Yeah, what did you play with? Do you have special toys that you were playing with? Yes. What were you playing with? A big horsey. Did, now, does your friend that you had over, did she have special things that she liked to play with? Yeah, yeah and did you make sure she had those special things? Yeah. Excellent. Let me ask you another question. Have you ever gone over to your friend's house to play? Yeah. <gasps> How was that? Did you have fun? Yeah. yeah, did she have special things for you to play with? 
Yes, I, I'm thinking it back. I'm, we're going to be talking today about this word um, hospitality and welcome. So when you had your friend over, you wanted her to have a good time, didn't you? You wanted to have fun together, so you made sure that you played with the special things that she liked, and when you went over to her house, she made sure that you got to play with the special things that you liked, didn't she? Sometimes I remember when um, I would have friends over to my house when I was about your age, my mom, and I would have them spend the night, my mom would make these big old pancakes that looked like Mickey Mouse. And we used to love that. So sometimes we do special things. We go the extra mile. We talk about being the extra kindness. So we want people, we want our friends, when, we come, when they come to our house, we want them to have a good time so they'll come back. Let them know that we enjoy playing with them as when we go to their house. So when we, when we have people come to church, we want them to have a good time too. We want to welcome them, don't we? And what's one of the things that we could do to welcome them, do you think? We could. We could call them. We could go up. Like, let's just say, Miss Allison, come over here for a minute. I pick on Allison all the time. You know why? Because she is my friend. And she puts up with what I do. <laughs> you can sit in the big chair if you want. See? We left, do you know what was a really nice thing? We didn't even know that. We left the nice big chair for Miss Allison because that's the most comfortable chair up here. So let's just say I didn't really know Allison and she was here. I would probably go up and say, hi, my name is Karen. What's yours? My name is Allison. Nice to meet you. And so that's one way we can welcome. You know, uh, Jesus talked about welcoming and hospitality tons in the Bible. And one of the things he said, you know, not only do we show kindness... That's Bruce telling me to hurry up. <laughs> Not only do we show kindness um, and welcome, but we, go, we do it a little extra. Like if somebody asks you for a drink of water, you not only do you get them water, you get them cold water with ice. with ice in it. So we're told to do welcoming so people feel good here. So if Allison, if I just met Allison for the first time, not only would I introduce her to myself, I would introduce her to some other people that, so she would know. So welcome. Welcome. So next time you have your friend over, think of something really special that you can do that would make her happy. And when you do that, guess who else you make happy? Jesus. Jesus loves when you welcome and show hospitality. So thank you for coming up. We're going to have a prayer. I don't know if you're going to go to children's church or you're going to stay in here. You can do whatever you want, okay? All right, so we're going to do a little prayer, and then we'll, we'll go on. You want to say a prayer with me first? Okay, I'll make it quick. Dear God, thank you. For this day. Amen. Amen. That was quick. Now, baptism, baptism is a outward and visible sign that we belong to God, that we are part of God's family, and that we have been cleansed and claimed and called. So baptism reminds us that we're a covenant people. We're a community together, not merely for our own sake, but for the sake of the, of the one who comes to save us all. So I invite you to remember your baptism and let us be thankful for indeed we belong to God and nothing in all of creation can ever separate us from God's love for each and every one of us.
Let us pray. Almighty and tender God, you are immortal and invisible, and yet in Jesus, you are friend. And as Holy Spirit, you hover over us just as you hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation. So we need you, God, in all these ways to be the God who takes our breath away when we see beauty or miracle or mystery. To be the needed friend who always has time for us and our questions and our tears, our joys and celebration and to be spirit always empowering us even when we don't feel empowered, lifting us up. So we give you thanks for drawing us here and giving us time to be here. Thank you for the song sung, the word proclaimed. We thank you for the gift of prayer for the people in our lives who are in some ways responsible for our being part of this faith. We come to you this morning trusting that you know the needs of the world. We cry out at the continuation of violence in so many places. And we pray for victims of violence. We lift up the families and friends of the shooting victims in Atlanta and throughout this country and in your creation. Draw them near to you and heal the wounds of the victims and heal the woundedness of those who oppress, threaten, and bully. We lift now the loved ones that we have we lift up children, young children and grown children. We pray for them to have faith in you, for the strength that comes from knowing you. And for those of us without our own children, we pray for the children of this church, for they belong to all of us. Be with their teachers and their youth leaders and all who share their life we particularly pray for parents. Parents who are facing serious challenges. Parents having difficult issues. Surround them with your Holy Spirit and give to each your powerful presence. We lift up those who are sick and ill, those in the hospital, those who are facing surgery, those in rehab facilities, strengthening their body, surround all those who care for them and help them to, to be healed from their disease and disease. We pray for those who grieve, the loss of love. Surround them with your spirit and give to them the peace that passes all understanding. We lift up each other and ask that you hold us close and that you lead us in courage, that you give space for us to use gifts and that you surround our leaders our elders in making decisions that are sometimes easy and sometimes not so easy. And for the changing nature of our world and the changing nat nature of our lives that unsettle us, remind us that you are our refuge and strength. And Holy God, always give us a grateful heart. We offer these prayers and the prayer that you teach us to say together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgiven our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are again, as always, grateful for the commitment to continue supporting the work and the mission and the mission of Pine Shores. We're so grateful that uh, that commitment is a priority in each of our lives. There are a number of ways in which you can continue to, to, uh, to make your contributions. The, there's an offering plate at the door as you go out or you can text or mail or use our online our line uh, option as well. So we thank God for all the many blessings in our lives and thank you for your continued support. Blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So as we prepare to hear God's word, um, we are delighted to be able to uh, let you know that uh, Reverend Melanie Kim Hamill will be preaching for us this morning. We're grateful for her participation in the life of Pine Shores and her gift to share with us this morning. I invite you into a moment of prayer as we prepare our hearts to hear God's word. Holy God, speak to our fear and our uncertainty. Speak to us of the hope and peace needed today. Speak to us of the love and faith that always sustains, so as the scripture is read and the word is proclaimed, we will be open to what you have to say to us today and then respond to you with a deeper and greater faithfulness. Quiet us now as we sit expectant to hear, to hear your word, for we do pray, amen. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. Just then in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy. And Jesus asked the lawyers and the Pharisees, is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? But they were silent. So Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Then Jesus said to them, if one of you has a child or an ox that has fallen into a well, will you not immediately pull it out on a Sabbath day? And they could not reply to this. When he noticed how the guests chose their places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brother or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, 
and for the word of God within us, we say, thanks be to God. Greetings, Pine Shore family, especially during this Lenten season. Today, we will be exploring the blessing of hospitality. Would you pray with me now? Most gracious God, we are thankful for this place of worship, this think tank that we get to be a part of, to study, reflect, to worship, to think, to grieve, to celebrate together. And now in this sacred space, we ask that you would meet us Meet us in our hearts and our spirits. Give us the wherewithal to open up our hearts and our minds to receive this word that you have for us this day. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Hospitality is a way of life fundamental to Christian identity. Its mysteries, riches, and difficulties are revealed most fully as it's practiced both individually and as a community of faith. Through practice, we can push past the superficial layers of friendliness to the deeper strata of respect, care, and honesty. Hospitality is holistic. Hospitality creates a distinctively spiritual experience for all who are involved. As physical, emotional, and material needs are met by Christian communities, we bear witness to the redemptive activity of God. Craig Dykstra, in his book, Growing in the Life of Faith, puts it this way. Living in Christian community does not mean living only with others like us. It does not mean living with an attitude of friendliness towards strangers. It involves actual hospitality to the stranger, face-to-face encounters in which the stranger is given hospice, protection from danger and threat, and in which the stranger is welcomed into one's home and life as if she or he could be nothing else but a neighbor. Who is my neighbor, Jesus asked in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Who is my neighbor? 
Every stranger is in need of hospitality, and every one of us could be considered a stranger to someone else. This feels like a huge ask. It feels daunting when we start to think through the practical applications of this. We may not always be able to pick up a complete stranger from the street and open our homes for welcoming as if they were a family member for safety reasons. We may need to rely on some more established protocols that are in place through nonprofit organizations, ministries of this church and others, service events. However, the heart of hospitality as we perhaps understand it or practice it can be examined and reflected upon and become more integrated into how we live out our lives of faith. It can help us to internalize the high call of genuine Christian hospitality as we know it, as a church family. For the Christian tradition, Luke 14, our scripture passage this morning, as well as the Gospel, Matthew 25, both of those shape the distinction between conventional and Christian hospitality. Jesus' instructions in verses 12 through 14, as was read earlier in our text this morning, addresses invitation explicitly. Jesus says, also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case, in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. Jesus challenges narrow definitions and dimensions of hospitality and presses them outward to include those with whom one least desires to have connections. The poor and infirmed come with their inconvenient needs and condition, with their incapacity to reciprocate, but in welcoming them, one anticipates and reflects the wonderful welcome of God. Christine Pohl, she is a Methodist pastor, she's a professor and a writer. In her book, Making Room, Rediscovering or Recovering Hospitality as a Christian Tradition, she says this, for much of church history, Christians addressed concerns about recognition and human dignity within their discussions and their practices of hospitality, especially in relation to strangers. Hospitality was a basic category for dealing with the importance of transcending social differences and breaking social boundaries that excluded certain categories of kinds of persons. Hospitality provided a context for recognizing the worth of persons who seem to have little when assessed by worldly standards. The reason why Jesus challenged this notion of invitation, thus upending status quo, is because Jesus is chiefly concerned with recognizing that every single person is the beloved child of God worthy of respect and dignity. So no matter what our own individual circumstances are, universally, we can all relate to the affirming feelings of being seen and valued. We all know what it feels like to be excluded, how painful that is. And conversely, the grace, the full grace of knowing that you are included and accepted. In a society and culture that values success and influence, it is a radical notion then to invite those who are on the margins to stand in solidarity with Jesus' teachings about the least of us. For we know that in the economy of God, all are invited, all are welcome, all life matters. People view hospitality as quaint or tame partly because they don't understand the power of recognition. When a person who is not valued by a society and is received by a socially respected person or a group as a human being with dignity and worth, small transformations start to occur. The person's self-assessment, so often tied to societal assessment, is enhanced. This has a ripple, ripple effect into the systems that we use as people in our work, in our lives, in society, in our culture, to assign value. 
Hospitality can be, begin a process towards visibility and respect. Another barrier to Christian hospitality may lie in the discomfort that we have around need. In our individualistic society, depending on the generosity of others is really difficult, even downright degrading. However, in ancient times, the time of our early church, everyone depended on someone else's hospitality. Perhaps confronting someone with a great need is an experience that we avoid on a one-to-one basis because it makes us think about what it would be like to be that vulnerable just how scary that might be. Maybe you yourself have been one paycheck away, paycheck away from being without a home. There are so many examples that we can all draw on individually about a time that we were with great need. Being in need, being vulnerable enough to accept the care, the help, and the resources of others is just as much of a spiritual discipline as it is to give. Giving and receiving both require a framework of Christian hospitality as Jesus teaches us in order to fully and faithfully live into it. Hospitality touches and transforms all who surrender to this blessing, and it is indeed a blessing, a challenge, but a deep blessing. Growing up in a pastor's home had its unique gifts and challenges. For example, during holidays, that are accompanied by the big meals, you know, Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, my, her- my parents would invite select members from the congregation over to our home to share a meal. This was very inconvenient for my siblings and me. This always meant that we would spend the days leading up to the holiday cleaning and helping mom and dad with preparing to host, while other families, it felt like, got to relax. That's at least how we saw it. Nothing about the holidays felt like it was just about my immediate family. We would complain that it was so selfish of our parents to put others before us. We would complain that it was unfair to put us to work and make us feel comfortable at our own table for people that we hardly knew. And sometimes I even wondered, yes, if our guests actually wanted to be sitting at the pastor's table at the pastor's house when they could literally be anywhere else. As I got to be a little older, I began to understand what it was my parents were doing. They were inviting international students to our home who would otherwise have no place to go. They invited new families to the area over to our home. They invited the single parent or the childless couple couple over to our house to share my mom's delicious cooking over some fellowship at the table. And slowly, I began to look forward to hosting alongside with my parents because of the beautiful stories of these lives that intersected with ours around the dinner table. The inconveniences slowly faded, and the understanding of hospitality, that is one of the greatest blessings that I take from being a PK, a pastor's kid. Jesus asked, who is this stranger? Let us open our hearts to the ones who challenge our comfort levels. Let us receive the blessings of hospitality in the name of the one who fed the hungry, healed the sick, and sat with the least of us, the Christ. Amen. Together, let us affirm what we believe by using this affirmation of faith. We believe in God, who has given us the gift of life, and in Jesus Christ, who came to show us abundant life, and in the Holy Spirit, who opens us to receive this gift and share it in testimony with others. We believe the kingdom of God that is here and now and is yet to come. For we believe that we are witnesses to the resurrection and are called to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. 
We believe in the strength of the church of which we are part and in which we find fellowship and opportunities to serve. Upon these truths, we do affirm our faith. Together we serve, united by love, inviting God's word to the glorious feast. We work and we pray through sorrow and joy, extending God's love to the last and the least. We welcome the scarred, the wealthy, the poor, the busy, the Friends, as we get ready to leave and go out into the world, remember the words that Melanie spoke to us, words of hospitality, especially to those who need lifting up this day, probably even we as well. So now go forth as those enjoy, and with me take this benediction. Go forth into the world as a disciple of Jesus Christ to live out the good news. May the steadfast love of God renew you the word of Jesus Christ guide you, and the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessings and peace. Mm -hmm.